Hi, what you're about to see is something a little bit different and I'm really excited to share it with you. Every single month, I host a free event inside of my free community home. And this past month, we did something really fun. Participants were invited forward to experience a day in their life inside of their dream reality. What it would feel like and what it would be like if all of their dreams came true and if they gave themselves permission to really go for it and dream big, what that would look like as it was playing out in front of them. And then after that, they invited forward their future self the version of them that was capable of creating that reality in order to receive all of their guidance and their wisdom and support on how they did that, how they created it, and what advice their future self would give their present self on how to overcome all of their doubt and their fears and all of the obstacles they see in their way so that they too can make that reality possible for them. At the beginning of this event, I shared my story because I went through this. There was a point in time where I did not believe in myself. I doubted myself. I downplayed my ability to, to create whatever it was that called to me. And over the course of time, I learned how to question those belief systems, how to trust my intuition. I spoke to my future self. I had conversations with my highest self so that I could navigate those things, shift how I felt about me, how I saw what was possible for me, and create a life that deeply fulfills me. And I thought sharing my story with you would inspire you and give you maybe a little bit of a nudge forward to step into your own light and claim what it is that really calls to you. So I hope that you enjoy this segment from this event and I hope it inspires you to take action inside of your own life. And if this is an event that you wish that you were there for, because it sounds really cool and it's something you'd like to experience, it's been recorded and it's been posted inside of home just like every event is as well. And you're welcome to come in and give it a watch for yourself. It's completely free. Just head to the show notes, join the home community, it's free. And all of the recordings from past events are there and you're welcome to sit down and experience it for yourself to see what's truly possible for you inside of this lifetime if you dare yourself to dream big enough and to invite your future self forward to help you navigate the path to get there. Please enjoy. Today, we're going to have a really fun experience where you're going to get to invite forward your future self. You're gonna invite them forward and you're gonna sit down with them and you're going to have a bear witness to what is possible for you when you can allow yourself and give yourself permission to dream big and meet this version of you, this future version of you that has already created your dream reality and ask them, how did you do that? What can you tell me about this? What, what do I need to know? Who do I need to become? And give them an opportunity to share with you everything that they've learned to help guide you where you ultimately want to go. And then on the flip side, we're going to be inviting another version of you forward. The version of you that sometimes says, yeah, but, <laughs> but I don't know how to do that. But I don't know if that's possible for me. But I don't know if I know enough. I don't know if I'm skilled enough. I don't know if I have the tools. What if this happens? What if that happens? What if this person says this thing or that thing, right? There's always that part of us that has a little bit of doubt back here. And that part of us tends to become a problem because we see them as the obstacle that's standing in our way from getting to this future reality that we really, really want. But I think inside of this event today, and we'll get there, but what I would like you to do is be able to see this part of you as rather than the obstacle, the key. 
this part of you didn't exist, then you would already be that version of you. And so this part of you actually does hold the key to getting there. And it's working with them, not against them, that will help facilitate that growth. And I would argue that this future version of you, this future version of you that has created this dream reality, did that at some point. They acknowledged the doubt. They allowed the doubt to be there and they worked with it rather than against it. And so in doing that today and learning how to do that today, you're already moving towards this future potential and taking that step where you might typically either not want to or not know how to. And so using the wisdom and the guidance from these two versions of you, we will at the very end of this event create tangible grounded action steps to help you move forward from today. So it's it's going to be grounded into action that whatever feels good and whatever feels aligned for you so that you can leave here at least having the awareness of what you would like to do next and where you'd like to go next. How does that sound? <laughs> Any questions about anything? Any comments, anything on your heart that you want to share? before we get into things. No? Okay. So I thought I would start this event with my story because I have learned all this through doing and through my experiences of doing this work, embodying this work, fighting against this work and learning from this work. I think it's important to see it in someone else and to hear how they did it and what their experience looked like and what it felt like, which will help ground some of this in for you as you get to experience it for yourself. And there are some takeaways that I learned from my experience that I would really like to share with you that you can take or leave, whatever resonates for you. But I think it it's always helpful to receive a perspective that you may not have had the awareness of before that you can kind of reflect on and kind of use this event that that might offer you a doorway in inside this event that you may not have had the awareness of before. Okay, it'll become more clear as I get into it. <laughs> so I want to tell you a little bit about about me and how I got here. Okay. So growing up, really, when I say growing up, I mean the first 34 years of my life. I'm 37. For the first 34 years of my life, being successful at something was really important to me. I would argue it was the most important thing to me. I really desperately wanted to feel significant in some way to be recognized, for people to look at me and say, wow, she did that. I admire her. And whatever it was that I focused my attention on that I believed was going to be the thing that I was going to be successful at, that was going to get me this, this validation and this praise from people, I went all in on it. And I was the hardest worker in the room because I so desperately wanted to achieve greatness of some kind. And what would happen is I would always fall short. There was always somebody who was better than me, smarter than me, prettier than me, faster than me, more experienced than me, or I just would never live up to the expectations that I had set out for myself. And I would see it as a complete failure and I would retreat, take some time, lick my wounds and then decide on what the next thing was going to be. Okay. It wasn't this, but it's going to be this, this is going to be the thing. And I would switch gears and I would throw myself into something else. And the same pattern would happen. I would work my ass off to be as great at this thing that I could possibly be. And then I would have an epic failure of some kind. I just, 
it just wouldn't work out in the way that I had envisioned it. And I would take my time and I would feel massive shame and sadness and I would grieve the loss of whatever this thing was. And I would start again in something new. (laughs) And it was this pattern over and over and over again. And at the time, I wasn't fully conscious of why I was doing this. I just knew that I wanted to. But it wasn't until many years later that I understood what this really was. I didn't feel worthy inside of who I was inherently. I didn't feel good enough. I didn't feel, I, I, I felt like there was some inherent flaw inside of me as a person and that I was born with it. And if I could just achieve greatness of some kind, I could change me enough to do away with that flaw. That flaw would no longer be there. And I could feel differently about myself as a byproduct. But because it never worked, I just went from one thing to the next, trying and failing. Every time I failed at something, it was like a reminder that my not enoughness, my unworthiness, my fatal flaw was still there. And I couldn't escape it, no matter how hard I tried. And then I entered into the spiritual space. And I applied the same logic into what I was doing in spirituality. I had to be the best psychic. I had to be the best medium. I had to make the impact with my business. I had to get information correct and I had to wow people because if I could, I could be this great empowering leader and then I could feel really good about who I was. And so I worked really, really hard at developing my psychic ability. And finally, one day I could hear my spirit guides. I was like, yes, ha. Ah. <laughs> I'm going to have all the answers now, right? Because they're going to be able to tell me what I'm getting wrong here. They're going to be able to give me the steps I've been missing to achieve this thing, to build this business, to have this massive impact that clearly I haven't been able to figure out. And so I sat down with a pen and paper. I was like, okay, spirit guides. <laughs> How do I build my business? And I got my pen and paper ready. And I was like, okay, what are they going to say? And their answer was love. And I was like, okay, (laughs) that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Maybe they didn't hear me. So I'm going to ask again, spirit guides, how do I build my business? And they said, love. And at this point, I was a little irritated because they clearly weren't listening. (laughs) Right? So I said, okay, I don't really understand why you keep telling me this. Can you provide me some context here? Because I don't understand how love is going to help me get clients and make money. Can you explain this to me, please? And they said, you don't want clients. You don't want money. You want love. And you believe that clients and money is going to allow you to feel that. And I had to sit with that for a second because I could see that they were right. And it was humbling to hear that because I was in judgment of that. I didn't like that about myself, but I could see that they had a point. And at the same time, I, I just, I didn't, I said, okay, fine. I see that you have a point here, but that's not what I'm asking you for. I'm not asking for you to tell me what I need to hear. I'm asking for you to tell me what I want to hear. And what I want to hear is your advice on how to build a business and make money. So thank you for this truth, but this is what I need from you. So please tell me the steps that I'm supposed to be taking the strategy that I'm missing to get money and make 
get clients and make money, please. And they said, love. As you grow, your business will grow too. And so we want you to focus on you first. And in time, your business will come. And that is not what I wanted to hear. And so I said, thank you very much. I'm going to take that information. I'm going to put it to the side and I'm going to completely disregard it. And I hired every business coach I could find. I spent tens of thousands of dollars taking courses, hiring mentors, taking every psychic development course I could take, coaching certifications. I learned marketing strategy, business strategy. I learned um, copywriting, like you name it, I did it. And I did that for many years. I would say five years. That was my strategy was just learning as much as I could because clearly I was missing something and my spirit guides were not going to help me. And I got nowhere. I didn't build a business. I didn't make any money and I didn't get any clients. Me as a person, I grew because I was taking in all of this information, but it wasn't translating in the way that I wanted it to. And finally, I hit this rock bottom place where I was, I did everything I was ever told to do and and I went above and beyond and I'm still stuck. Clearly this wound, this not enoughness is impacting me and I don't know how to overcome it. I'm just flawed, clearly. So I hired this coach that I met through this program that I was in at the time. Her name is Kelly. I still am friends with her to this day. We do a podcast every Monday called Madness and Meaning. And I hired her. She was a life coach, but I didn't hire her to help me work through my pain. (laughs) I hired her because she seemed so skilled that I thought if I could watch her coach me, I could become a better coach. And as a byproduct of that, get more clients and make more money. And I worked with her for almost a year and a half. And I did daily inner child work, self-forgiveness work, somatic work. I learned how to speak to these parts of me that hated who I was, that felt shame for who I was, that wanted to change who I was, that felt stuck Mm -hmm. and aggravated inside of who I was. And I learned how to show them compassion rather than trying to change them and make them go away. And in th- over the course of those 11 months to start, I s- began to feel differently inside of who I was. I began to be more compassionate with me where I used to be very judgmental of me. And that was something I was very resistant to doing because I was so used to being nasty to myself and using that as fuel and motivation to work hard. And I was scared if I was compassionate with myself, I would lose the drive. But what I found was the opposite. The more loving I was with myself, the more truthful I was with what I wanted, the more I trusted my instincts. And I changed my businesses completely. I started anchoring into more of the spiritual work, which I was too scared to do before because I was scared of what people would think of me. I no longer cared. I was speaking from the heart. I was so passionate about what I was doing. And then my trance channeling came online. It just came online. And I don't think that's a coincidence that 11 months into deep inner work, self-love work, my channel opened. My intuition just opened opened. I was setting boundaries with people I didn't before. I was traveling. My my business changed from in-person to virtual. I had all of this freedom. I was so fulfilled. My entire life changed. I wasn't making any money and I didn't have many clients, but I no longer cared. That need to fulfill some worthiness wound through validation from others was no longer there because I was self-validating. 
And I'm telling you this, I know this is a long story, but what I realized was that my spirit guides, surprise, surprise, were right. It was through love that I got everything else that I wanted. And now it was unconditional. I was free because before how I felt was conditional to my external circumstances. And now how I felt was unconditional because I innately just felt love for who I was. I no longer had to earn it. And I realized this paradigm that we sort of come into this world with, where when you think about source, you can call it the creator, you can call it God, whatever word you use to describe that being, that being of all-knowing, omnipotent oneness, that energy is the frequency of love. Because when you think of unconditional love, to unconditionally love something or someone means that there is nothing that is not okay. It's accepting of all things. It's loving of every part, right? It is oneness. It is all things. And that, that oneness, that unconditional acceptance is unconditional love. There is nothing that is outside of something that is unconditional. And when we talk about the creator, that energy of oneness, that energy of source is the frequency of unconditional love because love is all. There's nothing that's outside of it. And if we come from source, then we too are love and vibrate at the frequency of love at our core. But when we come into this physical world, we forget that. We forget who and what we are. And we believe that we have to earn it back. And we do that through all different kinds of things. For me, it was achievement. For others, it's through earning the love and approval, which is sort of what I was doing, right? Earning the love and approval from others so I could feel love and approval for myself because I didn't inherently believe it was there. And what my spirit guides were trying to show me was what I was forgetting which was I'm so much more powerful. I'm so much bigger than the paradigm that I was living within. And when I could access the frequency of unconditional love, I was able to create from that frequency. And what is possible for you inside of the frequency of love? Anything. Because there's nothing that exists outside of it. It is the most powerful energy because it is without limit. So I had to become the version of me first that was desiring to create through me something of that same energy. I could never have created home from who I was two years ago. I had to become the person capable of creating this, this, this thing through me. And so I, I guess the message that I'm trying to put forward for you today is when you think about what you want, rather than about I have to create that I can become, right? I have to build this life. I have to create this thing so that I can experience a version of me on the other side of that that I don't feel like I already have access to now. I want you to flip it. 
become so that you can create. Meaning, realizing that you already are. You don't have to become anything different than you already are. And so when I say become, I mean open up to the belief system realization that everything you need is already here. And once you can feel that within you, creating from that place, and what will become possible for you will be a reflection of what you are already, which is limitlessness. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to call your future self forward so that you can bear witness to something that calls to you. And yes, I want you to take note of what this future looks like. But I also want you to witness who this person is. Because they're a version of you who has been able to more fully embody their greatness already. They're no longer searching to feel differently because they feel so completely whole already. And what that version of you has learned from that evolution, the internal one, not just the external one. questions. Anything on your mind? Anything on your heart? If not, that's okay. Just thought I would ask. Is this something that's familiar that I'm putting forward here? Have you heard this all? Yeah. Yeah. And what does it feel like to receive it today? Yeah. At the moment, I'm in a place where I'm not sure who I am. I hear you. Or where I am. So moving forward um, and asking my higher self, it, it might be difficult in, in that way. So it'll be interesting what comes up when, when I sort of, work through through that side I might learn something more about myself as well hopefully yeah one I hear you I hear what you're saying and two maybe this is such a gift in disguise mm. because if you're feeling like you don't know then anything is possible yeah <laughs> right yeah. what i've noticed for me is i had to go from believing one thing about me to that paradigm completely shattering and me being like who the f am i mm -hmm. and it was from that place that i got to mm -hmm. discover and so sometimes you feel more lost on this journey than you were when you started but it's a byproduct of previous belief systems falling away to make room for whatever's ready to come through and it is the most open place to not know because once you know you're dead mm -hmm. set on something so to not yeah. know yeah, means right. anything is possible mm -hmm. And that's so uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I trust me, I get it. But I just want to put forward that perspective because the not knowing means that you're wide open. And there's no more exciting place to be than that. So I'm looking forward to seeing what comes through for you with that. Yeah. I've actually lately really been trying to figure out what path I'm I should 
go, um, you know, what, what gifts are going to be more natural, you know, easier, uh, for me than others. Um, and this helped a lot because it, I think it'll just come. Yeah, (laughs) it will. It absolutely will. I'm a testament to someone who needs to figure shit out. I don't feel comfortable in the not knowing. Right. I don't. It, it's horrible to not know. I need to know everything. I'm so type A control freak, right? <laughs> like I, I need to, I, if, if I don't know, I'm going to force myself to know. And that kept me stuck for a long time. And finally I was like, I'm open. I don't know anything. And that's when everything started to come through. And I was shown possibility and it was up to me to choose from it. There's Mm -hmm. nothing, there's nothing that's going to be placed on you, right? You get to choose your destiny. You get to choose your path, but being open to possibility, allowing something higher than you, great, not higher than you, but something with a, a greater perspective than you, let me say it that way. Mm-hmm. To give you snippets of a possibility becomes available to you when you're open, when you don't know, because otherwise you're closed off because you believe that you know. So you're not going to pay attention to anything else. Yeah. Oh, what an exciting, <laughs> what an exciting event this might be, guys, because you, you're just open. You're, you're open to receiving anything. And that is in my opinion, the most exciting place to be. It, it feels uncomfortable, but it's very exciting. We tend to think that the imagination is just kind of like daydreaming and it's just like the brain firing, synapses running, and we sort of disregard whatever we're daydreaming about because, oh, it's just the imagination. Like it's not real, it's not tangible, it's not re- the real life, right? And for just today, I want to put forward the notion that what comes through in your imagination isn't just the brain having fun, but rather the imagination is your intuition. And it's a higher level of perspective coming through you in a moment where your channel is open. And it's just offering you, it's your highest self offering you glimpses of possibility. Because as soon as something comes into your imagination, it's not coming from nowhere. Like, why does one person get an idea for something that another person doesn't? The reason is because the idea is coming from somewhere and for a specific purpose. The idea has a consciousness in and of itself. And when it comes to you, it's coming because it sees you as a match. You're open and you're also vibrating at a frequency where it says, ah, oh, that person can meet me and it can create from me. It can realize me. I can become something through this person. And it's up to you to choose in that moment. Is this for me or not? Or do I believe that this could be possible for me or not? And so it's just reflecting back to you potential and also a belief system. And the reason why I do these guided experiences in these events is because I'm trying to bypass the logical mind so that you can access your intuition because all of the answers from the higher levels of perspective come through your imagination. And when we're consciously focused on something, we disregard it or we're not open to receiving it. But when you're relaxed and you're open, that's when your intuition can come through. That's when your higher self can play a little bit and offer you glimpses of potential. 
And so whatever you're shown today inside of this experience, I want you to keep that at the back of your mind that it's not just your imagination, but maybe it is potential being shown to you at a specific place for a specific time because one, you're open and two, you're ready. And it's just up to you to decide if that's true.